Hello and welcome to this advanced tutorial on the URL API source OBS plugin that allows you to fetch data from a URL API or a local file, parse it and display it on your screen. In this tutorial, we'll focus on some of the exciting features that have been recently added to this plugin. So let's dive right in. One of the new features that we'll explore is the ability to read data from a local file instead of a URL. This can be incredibly useful when you have data stored on your computer that you want to display. Uh, to do this, open the data source building uh, dialog and select the file location. And the parsing process remains the same. In the file source, you will not see all of the request options. So save that and that's added to your screen. You could use the same test request operation as before to see what the file contents are and how you would want to parse them uh, in this example using a JSON pointer. Now let's move on to another exciting feature. You can now center the output text on your screen using a simple CSS trick. Again, go into the properties here, add text align center. So let's remove that and see the effect. You will also need to add margin right of about one half of the font size. So if my font size will be 48, I will set my margin to about 24 and that will center it um, or a little higher. And that will center it well within my, um, within the output here. The next feature is the dynamic inputs. You can select a text source and inject it into the body of a post request using the body request template. So let's see how that is done. Here I have a request that goes to the OpenAI uh, APIs. I set up the headers and everything correctly. In here I have the dynamic input option that will be the input to my request to OpenAI. In this case, I'm taking one of the existing text sources that's showing cats, facts, facts about cats. I select that and I have a couple of options I'll explain in a moment. But now in the body of the request, the post request, I can inject this input that's coming from this text source into the JSON request that I'm making to OpenAI. The example here I'm asking, is this fact about cats funny? And then I'm supplying the actual text of the cat. Fact. These two things here, skip empty and skip same, mean that if you don't have any text in this text source, the whole request will be skipped. And skip same means if this, if the text source is the same as it was last time, it will also skip the request because likely the output is going to be similar and you can skip that if you if you don't want that request to happen again, especially if you're working with something like OpenAI where you have to pay per request. So you may want to reduce on those. So setting this up like that, I can send the request and now I can also see how my request looks like here in the request body area i see this is this cat about fat cats is funny and then i'm getting the actual text i'm seeing kind of a preview of how that looks this is the response body and i will be extracting this text here from um, from here this would be the parsed output the next feature is uh, the live caption this gives you the ability to send the result of your api call output to your stream as the live caption for example, it can be any one of those. Uh, you can select it and say, I would like to send output to the current stream as captions, and that will automatically start sending that as captions to your stream. In case that you are streaming, if you are not, it's not going to do anything. 
Now let's explore how to fetch images from an API endpoint that uh, provides an image URL in its response body. In this request, for example, I'm using this dog images API that gives back a JSON response. And the message part here is essentially a URL. And so I would like my API source to fetch that URL and show the actual image instead of showing just the text. So I have a, an option here saying that the output is an image URL. If I turn this off, we're going to see the URL. And if I turn this on, the URL will be fetched and the actual image will show as the output uh, from this and you can bring it up on screen. Last but not least is the run while not visible feature. This allows the data source to continue fetching requests even if it's not currently visible on your scene. This is particularly useful when switching to another scene and wanting to keep the data source fresh when you return. You have an option here, run while not visible. If I turn this on and click OK, I can navigate away from this scene to a different scene, but this URL source will not stop its operation. Even though I'm not seeing it and I am in a different scene, it will actually keep fetching. So the data stays fresh. There you have it. We've covered some of the advanced features recently added to the OBS URL API source plugin, making it more powerful and versatile. I hope you found this tutorial helpful in enhancing your OBS setup. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. Happy streaming.